you know, they found that in the, the, the validity of the big five mm -hmm. uh, and of the, the G factor, the big five, i.e. general factor of personality, would be heightened if it was found in animals. And, and, the, and there is some evidence that you do have it. Uh, you you do have certainly with intelligence you have a G factor in animals. So so you you get the same. You you get spatial intelligence, essentially verbal intelligence, um, uh, and uh, linguistic and uh, uh, sort of mathematical almost counting. And it, you get you end up with this G factor in dogs, um, and a G factor in monkeys and and whatever the general factor of inte of intelligence. So if, it would be interesting if the personality. Uh, inventory could in some way be applied to animals and if it was found that there were five traits well when it comes to my dog freud i would say he's very high in agreeableness he wants to be everybody's friend um yeah he's high in openness there's nothing he's not into he doesn't want to investigate um look i'd say he's low in conscientiousness the uh, uh... <laughs> So, so I mean, I, I had a spring spaniel, and uh, he he died uh, aged uh, seven, nearly eight, of oh. epilepsy in 1997, and I still think about him. I mean, mm. it was it was the first time I seriously mourned. I was, I was 16, and um, he was unbelievably friendly. I mean, even yeah. by the standards of dogs, uh, he he was so friendly. Even other people, friends of mine, would come round. I mean, people when he died, people, everyone, even just friends from school, teachers at school, they were so sad. That Chipper had died. He was so friendly. It was ridiculous. Uh, he was very stupid, um, but he was um, he was uh, in incredibly friend, uh, incredibly mm -hmm. uh, uh, not at first, but once you got at first, he'd be slightly cautious, which seems to be a trait of Springer Spaniels. Um, they won't be the ones that will come running over to you, but then once you get oh, get them, no. he was incredibly Freud friendly. Does. Um, or does he? Um, mm -hmm. and he was the, the runt of the litter as well. So he, the mother rejected him, and it makes sense that he died of epilepsy because there was obviously some problem with him. And he was quite weird looking for a spring of span. He had quite short legs, uh, and he was incredibly muscular. Um, he was basically impossible to train, so he never walked to heel. Yeah. Um, Freud's hard to train. I don't know how he passed his doggy training class, but only one dog failed it, and he passed. Just uh, he was like bottom of the class that passed. Um, and uh, a, a very, uh, yeah, extremely, a very, very, just a very, very friendly and outgoing dog. I've been just, I've just, I've just checked. There are um, attempts to measure personality in dogs. And interestingly, there does seem to be five factors. Openness versus energetic. Friendliness versus, cur openness, energetic, basically. Friendliness, courteousness, trustworthiness, neuroticism, stroke, confusion. Uh, it's interesting mm. that they put confusion under neuroticism and openness stroke intelligence, which they, they merge into one trait. So there you go. That's the canine big five. And then there was a study in O2. Uh, what does it say here? Uh, 15,000 dogs, 164 different breeds. Yeah, play, the existence of five traits, playfulness, curiosity, sphere, fearfulness, chase proneness, sociability, aggressiveness. High order analyses showed that all factors except aggressiveness were related to each other, creating a broad factor that influences behavior in it. So basically, it's pretty much saying that there's a, that there's five factors in dogs and there's a general factor of personality in dogs. So that would that for me, that from an evolutionary perspective, you know, from the sort of case of parsimony, if it's true in humans and dogs, then that shows you, I think, its validity. It, it, it's it's yeah. solving more problems, the big five, if it's also true. They've kind of got so it's five factors, not the same factors, but it's five factors in dogs. That's the thing. I mean, dogs do tend to have their own individual little personalities. There's breed differences in the yeah, same yeah. way there's studies indicating um, such things in all uh, species so you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna notice that as well with the with the dogs i mean it, it, spring spaniels for example are not particularly intelligent by the standards of dogs they're about middle ranking uh and the most intelligent ones are border collies um and uh and then obviously the border, border collie personality quite pro-social dealing mm -hmm. with sheep and humans and stuff uh, uh, and and so the yeah you get these uh, yeah you get these I mean I, even with cats you're going to get it I know I mean, we have two cats my cat Sulo who is unbelievably pro-social to a ridiculous degree such that we couldn't get any work done I mean I work from home and my wife was doing was retraining as a social worker and therefore was being a student from home we couldn't get any work done because he'd want attention all the time so we got him a cat 
Um, and it's his, as I have said before, it's Richard, it's his cat, but it was a feral cat, so it won't really deal with us. It's very nervous of us, but it deal, it's with him. So it's his cat. Um, your, your pet cat has a pet cat. My cat has a cat, like Henry's cat. You know, my, my, <laughs> my, cat, my cat has a cat. Uh, which he dominates, used to anyway, dominate him and mount him <laughs> and hold him to the ground by his neck. And, and uh, uh, or, you know, he'd, 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 when we first got him, this Bart, which is, we didn't give him this name, it was the name we inherited from the woman that found him, it was born on the mean streets, you know. Mm. Uh, didn't didn't bond with humans in that crucial plastic bonding period, you see, because they have a little, little bonding period because they're fast fishy strassers, so they have a long bonding period. Um, and uh, and so we, Bart, they call him, and Bart would watch, we would watch him, and he'd watch him play with, you know, his toys or his mummy and daddy for a mm. bit, and then eventually, no, this is too long. It's intolerable. And he come over and attack him. Uh, the cats they're saying have neuroticism, extroversion, dominance, impulsiveness, and agreeableness. So again, very similar. Oh, yeah, so yeah. this is this is the veracity of the big five. I wonder if you have the big five personality in like wasps. <laughs> Do you know, when you said that, it just reminded me of it's an old Jasper Carrot joke from the 1980s. He he described wasps as like the the bother boys, the skinheads of the insect world. Yeah, yeah, they're very inclined to sting because they can sting yeah. about ten times, and then they can just grow, they can like grow or whatever new new venom. Whereas yeah. bees are less inclined to do so because if they sting, they die. Mm. So so this basically makes bees more, more pro social, at least to us. Yeah. Um, so so um. Yeah, there's bound to, there's probably different, there'd be very small differences. You know, the scale of the variation would be minuscule, but there, but there would be differences. Um, and in the same way with dogs, I suspect that the variation is probably quite small compared to us, because mm. um, they're all just hunters, they're all hunter gatherers. There's no niche splitting. Um, uh, but but, but it, it's, I mean, it's surely there, which again, it shows you the, the, I'll just Google that big five wasps. It's unlikely that I mean that they would do research on wasps like that. I just think well, that... do you think you'd meet any that are agreeable by the standards of wasps? You might, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. So, 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 so by the you're going to get some wasps that are less inclined to sting. I mean, think like when the when the when the the queen stops having stops laying eggs, then they notice this. They can smell that she's no longer giving off the appropriate pheromone hormones or whatever, and so then they kill her. And then and then and then and then they split up with different queens and fly off to different make different nests and start so, their own little group. Yeah, so presumably it would have to be quite a low agreeable wasp that would be the one to make make the first move and kill his own mother. Um, so there's probably oh. different, whereas you'd probably be another wasp that would be like, "Don't kill mum. Mum's lovely. Mum, mum brought us up, and and we owe mum so much." We're like, "No, she's she's yeah. not laying eggs anymore. She's no good to us. She's just a, she's just a waste of space. Might as well eat her." Um, 